Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Dead Malls, your one-stop shop for malls, retail, and everything in the details. And welcome back to our Midwest expedition here on Season 5. Today, as we leave Iowa and head up into the land of 10,000 lakes, we take a look at a classic 80s mall once covered here on the channel long, long ago. A mall that was much deserving of a revisit, as it's been years, but it's still got that classic mall story stuck in 1987, with neons, gold ceilings, and a rich taste for carpet. Today we'll be taking a look at Albert Lee's North Bridge Mall. But before we get started today, I'd like to take a moment to shout out our winner who was able to successfully guess the next mall. Very nice job, Northwest Indiana Elevators. If you would like to have your chance of being shouted out in the next episode, stick around for the next challenge. Anyways, let's head in, take a gander, and tell the story of Northbridge Mall and see how it's doing as of October of 2022. Immediately upon entering Northbridge Mall, I was washed over by a wave of country music. <laughs> very, very loud country music, which is one of my worst fears. <laughs> Top 10 at least, so <laughs> for your viewing pleasure, I'll be sticking with a much more soothing 80s vaporwave soundtrack tonight. In between the songs, however, what you might be able to pick up on was the rain off the roof, which was so loud because a monsoon rainstorm was passing through, which to complement the golden cold atmosphere was a really elegant wet dance. Let's get started with the history. Northbridge Mall's story begins well before the mall in the slow-growing town of Albert Lee, Minnesota. In 1966, Skyline Mall opened just three miles away from the site of the future Northbridge. Skyline Mall was your very average 60s mall for a small farming town. Plenty of local businesses saw opportunity in Big Box moving to the mall. Its three anchors, IGA, JCPenney, and Montgomery Wards would hold it down for over two decades. However, with time, these outdated brands would leave town as the population boom would slow and its retail shifted more towards the northern corridor and towards the interstate. Skyline Mall was left out of favor, and by 1986, construction had been greenlit on the north side for the next big thing.
If anyone knows what these old stores were, please let me know down below. One of the most fun things I do at malls is guess what the old stores were. And usually it's pretty easy since I've been acquainted with most of them in big malls. But in these small town malls, it's not a walk in the park since their storefronts are so much different. So if anyone would happen to know what tenants once filled these 1987 halls, let me know down below. Oh yeah, 1987, let's get to that. Northbridge Mall would officially open in 1987 as the biggest retail complex in town. Instantly, it was flooded with hundreds of residents and local patrons. At around 250,000 square feet of leasable retail space, it dwarfed Skyline Mall as the next big thing. And it was that in every single aspect. Between Herberger's on the south side, Only Deals on the east side, and Shopco on the north, lie a mall with the most 80s atmosphere as 80s could get. Gold mirrored ceilings and trims, big marquette bulb lighting following the skylights, and a food court straight from 87, featuring hundreds of neon tubes just within it, accompanied of course by a seven screen theaters. Over 35 inline tenants would open day one with them all including such notables as GNC, Radio Shack, Claire's, and Hallmark. You know, your very standard 80s small town mall stores. And for years to come, the mall would thrive without much change. Very quickly, you'll hear in our history just how fast Northbridge died. It may have been built beautiful at the time, but very quickly was left in a bygone era. I found it fascinating how occasionally my camera would focus on the gold mirrored ceilings and lights, and for brief glimpses would be shrouded in a golden tint. See just how much of that you can pick up on as we come down to the long abandoned food court. At some point in the late 90s, only deals would go bankrupt, closing as the first anchor gone. And by the turn of the century, the mall would very slowly start to lose those name brands. Each day, it was packed full of eager patrons and teens alike, but as time went on, people grew up and out of the 80s, leaving the mall in the past. Not to mention Albert Lee's slow growth turned into a slow decline as the town lost population. Skyline Mall was essentially abandoned by this point, turned into an office park, long forgotten about. And all of those names of the 80s, those restaurants and the food court, would start to leave Northbridge. As the 2000s began, the town watched as the mall slowly died. As much as I would give to see those neons turned on one last time, maybe it's for the best we let them rest. I've heard stories over the years about how they all slowly died until it was just a few tubes left, so maybe it's okay to let them die in peace. They'll go quietly with them all, and there's almost a sad, beautiful elegy in seeing them dead like this.
Dunham Sports would open in the old Only deals, which almost sounds like an off-brand version of OnlyFans. Ugh, I'm glad I didn't shop in there. <laughs> the 2000s would see the remainder of the national names leave the mall as its exodus worsened. Book World, Maurice's, Claire's, Bath & Body Works, all gone. The neons in the food court, after years of sitting empty, would either be turned off to save money or die entirely. It became clear that although this was this town's mall and was once the place to do any and all shopping, eating, and hanging out in those golden days, it was nearing the end. Down here by the old shop co would have once been several smaller stores and the arcade. Now, just a few empty offices and walls to hide the once proud anchor. Some pencil illustrates that it'll be back open soon, however, I find that extremely unlikely. In the spring of 2018, Herbergers announced that they'd be closing their location at the mall after the parent Bonton store's bankruptcy, and Shopco on the other end in the heat of their very own bankruptcy would also close permanently in spring of 2019. Now featuring Dunham's as their only anchor, the future looked bleak for the mall. Sparsely dotted by mom and pop shops and an anytime fitness in a few old stores, Around 2020, a local branch of the Albert Lee healthcare system would move into and renovate the old Herbergers into a medical clinic, which still has mall access surprisingly. I guess if anyone gets hurt in the mall, they can go into there. And throughout 2022, even into today as I record, the old shop co has been sectioned up and turned into front facing big box with no mall entrance. The food court still sits empty, theater still operating, and a few small businesses still meander throughout the mall's retirement. So what do you think the future holds for Northbridge Mall? Do you see any potential in it coming back to life? Do you think there'd be any way to save those neons and once again see it all in its former glory? Or were those days in the past and we should just do our best to move on? Let me know what you think down below. Guys, I want to thank you so much for watching tonight's episode. Northbridge was such a fun mall to touch up on and revisit, just like Southbridge. And I already can't wait to be back, basking under those golden lights in that gold-filled atmosphere. Seriously, it's intoxicating. If any of you are ever in the area, stop by and support the local businesses here. If you guys enjoy my Dead Mall content, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on weekly Dead Malls episodes. It's free. Also, consider heading over to the Patreon for the coolest perks and exclusive content. Next week, as we head up into the dry lands of South Dakota, we take it back to another small town mall, once featuring a Kmart adjacent to a JCPenney and her burgers. Guess which mall we'll be at, and I'll shout you out in the next episode. But until then, have yourselves a lovely day, and peace out guys, see you later.